Okay, this should be Blue Stinger for the Dreamcast. Um, a really close friend of mine bought me this for my birthday. She got it off Amazon. So it's been in the post office now for the last two days because uh, when they took when the postman brought this round to my house, um, I needed to sign for it, but I wasn't able to answer the door because I was asleep. So I've got it now anyway. So let's open it up. That was me. And there it is, blue stinger. Okay, sorry about that, but my camera batteries ran out there. Um, so here it is. And, uh, it looks like new actually, the condition is really great. I've been wanting to get this game for quite a while now. Um, from the videos of it that I've seen on YouTube, it looks like something that I'd really enjoy. Um, people seem to either love or hate this game. A lot of people don't like the game at all, and a lot of people like the game a lot and they think it's got a lot of charm. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to playing the Christmas scene in it. So there's the disc. And the disc looks absolutely perfect. There's the manual, which again looks uh, is in great condition. So yeah, let's take a look at Blue Stinger on the Dreamcast. doing? Did you go to Rat's place? I'm looking for Taco Pen. I guess she doesn't understand jokes. I love these kind of chicks. Blue Stinger was a Dreamcast launch title. In fact, in America it was released nine days before the Dreamcast itself was released, and in Europe three weeks before the Dreamcast was released, which is pretty crazy. It's an action survival horror game, kind of similar to the Resident Evil games, but so different at the same time. You can control one of either two characters in the game, Elliot G. Blade or Dog's Bower. You can switch between these two characters whenever you want, except for right at the start of the game, and one or two small areas as well.
You make your way through interesting and varied environments while stopping to fight monsters and doing the occasional puzzle. There's a huge variety of cool weapons consisting of long range weapons and short range weapons. Long range weapons are things like bazookas, guns and lasers. Short range weapons are things like hand to hand combat and melee weapons like axes and swords. An interesting thing is that you can pick up t-shirts for Dog's Bower which you can then make him wear to change his fighting style. So for example, if you make Dog's wear a karate t-shirt, his fighting style will be karate. If you make him wear a sumo t-shirt, then his fighting style will change to sumo. Some of the monsters will drop coins when you defeat them. Each time you collect coins, the amount of money that you have will go up. With the money, you can buy weapons, ammo and food from the many vending machines scattered throughout the game. Food is obviously used to boost your health. When your health bar gets low, your character will limp and hobble and will move more slowly. The game, at least on the easy setting, isn't really that challenging and the bosses are pretty easy as well. Except occasionally, you will get completely stuck in the game, not knowing what on earth you're supposed to do next. And this is my major gripe with the game. It's just so unintuitive and I've had to reach for the game guide several times. The only other complaint that I have is that the camera can sometimes be really bad. This usually happens when you're in small spaces and the camera will just point down. Interestingly, the camera was completely different in the Japanese version of this game. It was fixed, like how the camera is in the early Resident Evil games. But you know something? I like the game so much that I can easily overlook these two gripes. It's just a really fun game to play. The graphics don't seem that great, even for a launch title, but I like the character that they have, and they're really colourful. The gameplay is great, the music is awesome, and the monsters are designed really well, especially the bosses. The game just has so much charm. For example, you've always got this really loud dramatic orchestral music playing. Even when you're just walking down an empty corridor, the voice acting is corny and out of sync. A lot of the cutscenes are funner. The monsters spew out coins like a fountain when you kill them. And you can buy rocket launchers from vending machines. I'm gonna take a bath. Nothing's gonna stop me. <laughs> what you'll do if the monster attacks you while you're butt naked? I'll fight back, butt naked. Stop whining! It's corner, it's funner, it's got a lot of charm, and it's just a really fun, entertaining game to play. I'd even say that this is probably one of my all time favourite games. I'm not sure if I'd recommend it, because, like I said, people either seem to love or hate this game. But if it comes across as something you'd like after watching this review, then I'd say definitely go for it. It's quite a unique experience. There was a sequel planned for this game which was going to be called Red Stinger, but the game's producer Shinya Nishigaki sadly died of a heart attack and took his ideas to the grave with him. So, that's Blue Stinger on the Dreamcast, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.